We begin today's program in Austria. Austria looks to elect a young conservative star as chancellor. Preliminary results already show Sebastian Kurz's People's Party took more than 30 percent of the vote in Sunday's parliamentary elections. Kurz began his political career in the party's youth win and at the age of 27 already served as Europe's youngest ever foreign minister. His miraculous rise culminated in taking leadership of Austria's People's Party just five months ago. Let's take a look at how he rose to where he is. Surely Austria's next chancellor and therefore the world's youngest national leader. The centre-right People's Party is part of the establishment, but in his short reign at the helm, 31-year-old Sebastian Kurz has shaken it up. Many said it cannot function, it shouldn't function, but today we received endless confidence from Austrian women and Austrian men. I'm unbelievably grateful and take this confidence as a mandate to carry out changes in Austria for which many of us had hoped. Without an outright majority, though, Kurtz will need help from a potentially controversial source. In other parts of Europe, centrist parties have looked to isolate the far right. In Austria, the Freedom Party is mainstream. Now it's favourite to become the junior partner in a Kurtz-led coalition government. The FPO looks likely to score one of its best ever results, nearly tied for second place with the centre-left Social Democrats. The party's leader is prioritising a classic populist mantra in any future government. At first, it is important to wait for the official result and not start to speculate about coalitions. But one thing I can tell you, the Freedom Party remains true to themselves and to Austrians. After an unusually vicious campaign, though, few see the two parties that have dominated Austrian post-World War II politics pairing up easily again. It seems very obvious that the Social Democrats uh, and the Conservatives are an old couple that just needs to be divorced. Uh, and the feeling amongst Social Democrats appears to be that any other option but the Conservatives, who have uh, campaigned on a reform agenda, something that would hurt Social Democratic power. Through a year of elections in Europe, the far right has made many gains, but it hadn't yet formed part of any government. Guy Henderson, CGTN, Vienna. So, what can we make of the so-called wonder kit of Austrian politics, Sebastian Kurz? Let's turn to our panelists to find out the answer. With me in Beijing studio, Professor Wang Yiwei, Dean, with the uh, Beijing... Uh, he is actually the director of the Center of the EU Studies at the Renmin University. Sorry, I got the title wrong, but therefore we got it right, ni right now. And also, we have uh, in Vienna, Jacob Moritz, Ebel, who is a researcher in political communication at the University of Vienna and a member of the Austrian National Election Study. Meanwhile, in London, we invited Professor Yin Beck, professorial research fellow at the European Institute of the London School of Economics and Political Science. I want to welcome to the three of you. Let me begin by asking you, Dr. Ebel, what do you make of the rise of that so-called wonder kid. Is it about his personal charm or is it about his political party's power or is it about an overall change in politics in your country? So um, it's actually quite fascinating. So as you said, he's not part of a new party as one would think uh, since it's a new, the party has a new name, party has a new color, but it's actually, the, uh, he's actually the leader of the People's Party and he campaigned through, um, with the slogan of change. With change, although the People's Party has been in government for 30 years now. And even him, as a, he as a, as a minister uh, over the last uh, years, he's not a person who's, who's new. Yeah. Still, he's, he has campaigned on change. He has campaigned also on immigration policy a lot. And in that, uh, a few months ago, uh, it was a real surprise that uh, his party um, surged in the polls. Um, yesterday, uh, like on Sunday, however, wasn't really a surprise anymore. We were expecting this win. But you still haven't exactly explained to me as to why you think there is a miraculous rise of this kid, quote-unquote. Uh, let me go to Mr. Begg uh, for your answer. Probably 
Dr. Yibel is in his country, as they say, when you're in the mountain, you wouldn't tell how the mountain looks exactly. So I guess from outside the mountain, Mr. Beck, you probably could tell exactly what the shape is of that mountain. I, th I think we're seeing several things simultaneously. One is not just in Austria, but very similar in Germany. You see disenchantment with the coalitions which have been largely in control of the country for many years. In Austria it goes back far longer, but uh, even in Germany you had the best part of 10 years of Angela Merkel's time in power has been in coalition with the Social Democrats. In France you saw the schism with the, the old parties. You see the dogfighting going on in the British campaign at the moment. So there is a, a desire among many electorates for something new. And I think what Sebastian Kurz brings to the party is, on the one hand, youth, and on the other, the, the idea that he's going to introduce something new to the political dialogue, which gets away from the old nostrums. Bear in mind that Austria had this very long-standing model of what you might loosely call Austro-Keynesianism, where there was a, a cohabitation between the centre-left and the centre-right, and you had the unions having a very powerful role. All of that's being eroded by economic change. Mm. Professor Wang, you've been very attentively listening to your two other colleagues. What really makes it his rise? Mr. Bag used two words. One is youth, the other is something new. Exactly what is that something new? Is it a mirage or is it for sure? Well, it's not in Austria, but in many other countries, also many young politicians that are taking power. So definitely the, the Europe and the, uh, in, the, in total the West need change. Change the people, change the party, change the political system. Difficult to change the political system. So uh, not just change the, 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 the people and the party, but so change the mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe let the young guys to do that. And also who have more energy and also new, fresh ideas, not banned by the political correctness and also not, uh, get out from the uh, political uh, assistance constraint. So he very uh, clearly said that uh, uh, Austria first, like uh, uh, Trump uh, in the United States, and also uh, the very clearly said that uh, the refugees and, and uh, the Muslims may be a challenge. It's even a threat of the uh, national security and national identity. Mm. So this makes the, uh, the voters say this is a true uh, politician. It depends on our interests and the views, not the traditional one. Mm. Then, Dr. Ibel, uh, wh what do you think? Um, are the voters really likely to trust these words? From the election result, it seems that they do, but in the long run, they have, never, they have never tested him, first of all. Secondly, you always know when politicians say something, usually they wouldn't implement it once they are in power. But the question is, in Austrian politics, how much leeway do the voters usually give to those in the very top political office? So this is a very difficult case um, that we have here now in Austria because, the, as I said before, the campaign was strongly focused um, on change and the only major other uh, policy issue was actually immigration politics. Mm. Um, there was some talk about an economics program um, which in some sorts also was very close to the one from the Freedom Party, so from the Radical Right Party. But generally, we only have two policy fields that we really know where the West Sebastian Kurz and the new uh, People's Party exactly stand. Um, there, people trust him, um, particularly on uh, the issue of uh, anti-immigration policies. Um, there, he has made a name of himself over the last past years, but even before that. So people trust him, and he probably can be trusted also to deliver on that issue. Mm. Um, on the economics issue, although he hasn't, hasn't had a focus on economics thus far, his party um, is a conservative party and does, has uh, issue ownership on the issue of economics. However, on all other issues that are out there, we don't know much about him. Voters will have to trust him uh, for now. But for example, as it was um, uh, said before, we yeah. don't know exactly where this, where this new party or this new branded party stands now on European policies. And that could become um, at least very relevant in the next few months. Mm. Mr. Berg, what exactly is it? Is this a totally new frame? Or it's an old frame with some new paint, namely this beautiful face of a 31-year-old who enjoys the so-called youngest ever foreign 
minister status in the past few years and talking with a slogan against the immigrants. Is that the new paint or is that the new frame, Mr. Begg? I think it's both. Uh, on the immigrant question, what it uh, shows us is that European political systems, whether it's in Austria or elsewhere, are struggling to cope with the very difficult question of how to manage the flow of refugees and other economic migrants into their countries. Now, Austria has been to some extent in the front line. It's not quite been like Italy or Greece, but Austria is the transit route from the southern European countries towards Germany. Mm. And that has made, made Austria very, very touchy about this, this whole question. Plus, we should remember that Austria was very welcoming to immigrants in, in the breakup of Yugoslavia 15, 20 years ago. So you, you find many Slav names already in, in Austria as a result of that. So there is an overall sensitivity. But the reason it's not so much change is that from, from what I read about the, the approach by the, the People's Party, they, they want to maintain the European links. They are a fairly classic conservative party and talking for, calling for lower taxes. What they may be appealing to that is a bit different mm. is a younger generation which across Europe feels it's lost out from recent change. Europe is an aging society just as China, China is and that aging has meant that uh, the younger people in many countries feel that they are the losers from recent developments. Mm. We are seeing this party, Mr. Kurz's party, at a critical juncture. The reason we're saying that is because it really depends on which coalition partner they're likely to hold their hand with to decide the future direction of that country. The next big step for Mr. Kurtz is picking a suitable ally in Parliament. With the Austrian People's Party winning more than 30% of the vote, he is in a position to choose whether he wants to continue the decade-long grand coalition with the center-left under his leadership or enter an alliance with a nationalist, which is the far-right party. So what is likely to be alliance now is the biggest question mark facing all of us these days. We see that, Mr. Beck, in the election of Germany as well. Nobody expect that the AFD would get about 24 percent and for the first time ever in decades the far right enter into the German parliament. Now there we go. We see another one this time with the People's Party and the Freedom Party likely to have a coalition. Far right as well. What do you make of the prospect? The, I think the we have to remember that 17 years ago we had ex almost exactly the same scenario when the Freedom Party won pretty well the same share of the vote as it did this time around. And that was condemned by other European countries. It led to a five years of tension between the rest of the EU and Austria. But things have moved on. The, 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 the far right has been legitimized in many other countries, such as in France with Marine Le Pen's party or in, in Germany with the IFD getting 13% of the vote. So there's, there's been a shift overall in how we perceive the, the far-right parties. One curiosity, which I think, in, in think you should mm. put to your Austrian correspondent, is that uh, in, th in theory the arithmetic allows the centre-left, the Social Democrats, and the far-right to form a coalition as well. Well, is that almost possible? Uh, Dr. Ebel, what is your analysis? So exactly, I would even add another option um, into the mix, which is a minority government, government by the list, uh, by, the, by the People's Party. But let's first start with the uh, Social Democrats and the Freedom Party. Um, yes, the Social Democrats have, um, are, keeping, are keeping everything open in a way, so they, are talk, they will be talking to the People's Party, they will be talking to the Freedom Party. Hmm. The People's Party actually has should, should not have any intent of uh, going into a coalition with the Social Democrats because it will be difficult to show change in, again, a grand coalition. Right. But the Freedom Party might have more interest in going into a coalition with the Social Democrats as they might be at least of equal force in that coalition. But as I said before, there's even the possibility of a minority government under the People's Party, which would, would mean that the People's Party is the government party alone without a coalition mm. partner 
but for each, uh, for each law, for each legislature they want to pass, they could get the votes from different parties when, whenever right. they choose. Well, we that's see actually the most high, high risk and high reward scenario. Interesting. We see an interesting coincidence too, Dr. Ibel and Mr. Beck. Well, the Austrians have about 30 days to form a coalition government. Germany, the neighbor, also have two months, 60 days to form a coalition government. And at this point, almost half of those 60 days have already been spent. In other words, we're going to see quite an interesting coincidence for the two governments to decide exactly what kind of coalition they want. And as we all know, this is going to be eventually significant for the European politics. Where is it going? Mr. Becker, very briefly from you. Well, I think still the most likely outcome in uh, Germany is uh, one we, you and I discussed previously, and that is Jamaica, mm -hmm. the, the red, the, the, the black, green, and yellow, which is one that could paradoxically give Angela Merkel more power because she'll be able to set off the, the Greens against the Free Democrats right. and sit in the middle and uh, allow them to dispute things. It's not impossible that uh, the outcome in Austria will be similar with the, the People's Party having the predominant power in this and only relying to a secondary extent on the others, especially if the, Dr. Abel's idea of a minority government takes place. Right. We shouldn't be surprised, though, at how long it takes to form coalitions. This, this is in the nature of these forms of democracy. The, the Dutch just took over 200 days. Mm, wow. Uh, Dr. Ebel, having said that, though, what do you say? What's going on inside Germany, inside Austria, compared to in France and in the UK as well? How do you see Germ the European politics is evolving in some parts of the European map, on the other hand, very dramatically on the other parts of the European map. So in a way, there is, um, there is of course, when there is a, a, a right turn in politics, of course, the um, anti-European um, resentment there uh, is relevant, so it, it, it is going on, it is going on in, in Austria, it is there in Germany, of course, we've seen it now in Great Britain. Um, as I said before, with the People's Party, yes, it should be pro-European, um, that's what the party stands for generally, but uh, Sebastian Kurz has close ties to um, Viktor Orban, for example, um, in Hungary, and he's not exactly known for being very pro-European. Mm. So I would say that the, that the most likely coalition will be an, if an, a People's Party Freedom Party coalition, and in that it will be difficult to actually have a very pro-European stance, and that will be very interesting to see over the next years how both parties will manage to keep each other in check in that. Mm. Professor Wang, there have been a lot of concern coming from the rest of the world They're looking at the Austrian politics. For example, with the rise of the far right this time as well, the so-called uh, Freedom Party. And that was, uh, they say, founded by some of those coming from the Nazi parties. And also in the year 2000, as uh, uh, Mr. Beck earlier illustrated that there was very strong reaction coming from within the European countries and also from our side. Israel even withdrew its ambassador from Austria after that coalition between the uh, central right and the far right being formed. So Professor Wang, are we, re are we seeing a repeat of history or this time is a much more critical juncture? Your judgment here. Well, it's hard to say. It's very really controversial. On the one side, that uh, we are not so worried about uh, the Austrian uh, situation because let the, uh, the far right party in power. Maybe better as the opposition party make more troubles uh, in the future. Uh, it's not just in Austria, many other countries like France, mm -hmm. Germany, also the far right you know, now is taking power. And then they know how to run a country is most difficult in order to uh, opposition party and they make more troubles. And secondly, uh, I think. Uh, Austria, uh, for the European policy, is more uh, followed uh, Germany uh, traditionally and uh, joined the uh, European Union very late in only uh, 1995. Uh, in the international stage, it's a very neutral, uh, sorry, neutral state. And so um, I think it's Germany taking it in Austria, don't worry so much. But uh, to be frankly, uh, in the 
longer perspective, a history perspective, that uh, Austria has so many troubles because the, uh, the, the very successful the public diplomacy that put the, uh, Adolf Hitler as, the Germ as, as German and uh, Beethoven as uh, Austria. <laughs> so they are, they are, they are, they are uh, Nazi, uh, sometimes the right wing, uh, some mentality. Uh, uh, it's not like a Germany, so they are uh, faced up to the history. So sometimes we will worry about that, the, uh, the potential of the threat. I see. Do you have that concern, Dr. Yubel? Um, I, I can't really say. So the Freedom Party has, has its history. There are specific politicians in, in the Freedom Party um, that have a problematic past. And I think that this will will lead probably to some problems in a future coalition. Hmm. To say the least. Of course, we see a lot of changes in the elections. We see young faces. We see the far right getting ever more to the center of the stage. No one would know exactly what would all of this mixed up would mean. But Mr. Begg, certainly Europe is facing a lot of issues. Immigration is only one of them. In fact, most importantly is the economy and what is the future model, the structural reform. Mr. Begg, with what is going on in Austria, do you see any sign that people are finding the real solutions? Well, I think that Austria is one of the countries in Europe which has moved very much in the direction of high technology goods and services. It's no longer the, the old model of, of the economy which we are familiar with. And that in itself becomes an explanation for some of the change. You see it in many other parts of the world as well, that uh, economic change is leading to political change. And some of the resentment of that is on, the, on behalf of the, the people who have lost out from it. In Austria as well, there is a, a tendency for the young to have voted for change mm. without quite knowing where they're going with it. So we see, I don't think it's an, e an easy, simple explanation for these. There are many currents beneath the surface which are, are causing the evolutions we're witnessing. And I'd add, add one other thing, which is when we start to compare, with, for example, with France and the UK, is different electoral systems make it far easier or more difficult for the centre-right or the far-right to to assume power in the way it looks like it might do in Austria. It's almost inconceivable in the French system that you would get uh, a far-right government because mm. so much of the centre would oppose it in what ultimately is a first a two-horse race at the end. Right. Uh, Professor Wang, we only have uh, 15 seconds left for you, but I do want to have some of your final words. Professor. Uh, Austria, our economy, uh, compared to other European countries, I think quite good. Uh, the tax also very low, so I hope uh, the young uh, politicians will lead a uh, uh, bright future for, for Austria and the European Union. I see. Wang Yiwei, Jacob Moritz, Ebel, and Ian Begg, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. Really appreciate it.